right, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I'm building a productivity app called Ellie. I'm basically just documenting myself building this productivity app. So that's what we're gonna do today. A little bit of context, Ellie is a productivity app. In one sentence, it's your to-do list and calendar combined. Ellie has a Google and Apple calendar integration, so you can display these events alongside your tasks in the time box. This is really great if you wanna plan around whatever meetings and appointments you have that day. It also has a two-way sync for Google. Anytime you add a task to the time box, it's gonna create an event in your Google calendar and sync it. So the only missing calendar that we got left is Outlook. Outlook integration has been a really requested feature. I think I get like one or two emails a week. Someone asks, do you have an Outlook integration? Is this on the way? I can't use the app without the Outlook integration. So this is a really important feature and actually working on this very heavily for the last month, like on and off. Got a couple beta testers to test it and we're finally gonna start getting that over the finish line. Hopefully get released if nothing happens. If everything goes well, by the time this video is released, you should be able to use your Outlook calendar with Ellie. Before we do that, gonna go take Luna on a walk though. Raining last few days, she absolutely hates water and so she like doesn't wanna go outside. So yeah, let's go do that. Yeah, it's pretty cold outside, but the sun made it really um, not as bad. Let me talk about the process of building this Outlook integration. We've actually done one round of beta. I would say it's like 99% there. The last 1%, it's like a lot of small details and polishing. But let me tell you what it's taken to get to this point. I actually attempted to work on this feature probably like six months ago, but I ran into some roadblocks with Microsoft. If you wanna build something on top of, you know, Gmail or Google Calendar or Outlook, you can't just do it. You need to um, apply to have access to the API. Long story short, it took Microsoft like six months to approve the account. You actually need a registered company to be able to build on top of the Outlook API. They just would not accept my legal documents that I like own the company. A month ago, we finally got the account approved, though I finally got to get started on that. So that was roadblock number one. The next thing, man, the sun, man, the sun is so bad. All right, I'll just scoot back here in the darkness. Yeah, problem number two is just, it's a really complex feature. I knew it would probably take me like two months to build this out. So to speed things up, I actually brought in a friend to help with the integration. So he helped with some of the desktop parts of the integration. And then I focus a lot on the iOS and then some of the backend stuff. So there were a lot of little challenges, like the API didn't work the way that we thought it would work in some areas. We wasted a lot of time with certain encryption things, which we thought we had to implement. Turns out we didn't have to. By far the biggest challenge that we faced though was when it came to implementing two-way sync. Again, this is where you drag a task into your calendar and then it creates an Outlook event on your Outlook calendar and syncs the two. So then when you move it around in Ellie, it'll update an Outlook. And when you update it in Outlook, it'll update it in Ellie. We actually discovered a major flaw in the Google version of this, which again has been like around for over a year now. And like we have thousands of people using it. There's a specific thing in Firebase Functions where um, app thing, okay, this isn't worth it. This video is gonna end up being like an hour long if I, if I go into this. Um, okay, basically just know that there's basically a possibility of an infinite loop with the two-way sync. So this is what it looked like. When someone updated a task in Ellie, it would signal to my server, hey, um, we gotta go update the Google task. Google task gets updated. Then Google says, hey, Google task updated, we need to update the Ellie task. Usually there's something in here to stop that where it's like, oh, they're in sync, let's cut the loop right here. If things lined up just correctly, that loop would never be closed. It would say, hey, let's update Google, Hey, let's update Ellie. Hey, let's update Google. Hey, let's update Ellie. And it would keep going forever. I got to see this in action and it was pretty bad. So with my backend, you actually get charged per read and write because I'm using Firebase. So every like couple thousand reads, I get charged a couple cents. Every thousand writes, I get charged a couple cents. Um, I burned through like $5 in credit over like 15 minutes, which is a lot for Firebase. Just imagine what would happen if 
this happened to multiple users over the course of days. There's a horror story of someone incinerating $120,000 and actually, let me go find it. So like someone basically incinerated $120,000 over the course of two days because they had an infinite loop going on. Yeah, so infinite loops are super dangerous. Uh, you, they're not something to mess with, especially when you're using a, something like Firebase. So I realized I had to go deal with that, but unfortunately the only solution I can come up with, and I really thought through this, it was just to rewrite the entire thing. Like we had to rewrite the entire Google two-way sync. This probably took up about two weeks of the four weeks we've been working on this. So half the time on just rewriting the Google two-way sync. If you're a Firebase user and you're technical, you might've heard of something called Firebase functions. That's what we were using for this. We moved completely off of this. Like this was the bottleneck here. It just didn't give us enough control. So we had to move off of this and move it to a dedicated server. The entire system was gutted. It took like two weeks, but on the bright side, the possibility of infinite loop is, I don't want to say non-existent, but I think it's non-existent. I think this will actually save a lot of costs in the long run. It actually sped up the Google two-way sync and will speed up the two-way outlet sync. So there are actually a lot of benefits to rewriting this. Like I have no regrets. I think this will be great. Once we work on something like the Notion and the Todoist two-way sync, um, we'll probably use the same exact engine. So probably for the best that we ended up rewriting it, but that's what took the bulk of the time. That's what came up. So those were some of the challenges that we faced with Outlook, but right now where we're at, um, it actually functions. You can link up your, your Outlook calendar. It'll display the Outlook events and the two-way does actually work. So you can drag a task, syncs to Outlook, it's great. All that's left right now is just uh, polishing the last few bits. So this isn't really technical stuff, but I wanna show you guys like, you know, what goes on into a feature launch. All right, I'm gonna start working on the last remaining stuff that the beta testers reported on the Outlook integration. So let's go do that. Got a lot of stuff actually polished. The last major thing I think we gotta do here, I realized that the Outlook events actually don't appear in the iOS widget. So the widget's something that I uh, just released recently. Also, yeah, let me show you guys what this, uh, what this actually looks like on iOS, it's pretty good. If you go to Settings, Connected Calendars, there's this Add Outlook button. You'll see that it appears here. Yeah, this is what it looks like when you have an Outlook connected. Oh, okay. What the? Okay. I guess more things are broken. Okay, never mind. Uh, I guess I gotta fix this too. It looks like this button isn't even working. What is happening here? <laughs> okay, so I guess I got two things to fix. So I gotta fix this, and then in the widget, I need these Outlook events to appear too. Yeah, so I got these two events here, but if I go to the widget, only showing this Google event. So I basically have to modify it so that appears in the widget too. So that's what I'm gonna go do right now. So I added this code in the back end, which then now also takes into account Outlook events. If we go to the app, we see there's two events. There's an Outlook event and a Google event. If we go to the widget, you can see both of them appearing here now. So this is good on the widget. Everything looks good here. I think the final thing I gotta do, just realize I didn't really test it on the iPad. So gonna go ahead and do that. I think we're actually good and I think we can ship this and then we can start working on some of the marketing stuff. Uh, but gonna go run a few errands right now and then head to a coffee shop to, to go finish this up. So yeah, let's go do that. Okay, so now that this is being submitted to the App Store, next thing we gotta do is work on the Help Center. It's a website I threw together so that new users can walk through, look at all the features. I link to the Help Center like all throughout the app. When someone's you know looking at something like the two-way sync for Outlook, I plan on having a link to this Help Center article so they can understand what it is, uh, understand what all the settings mean. This has been super helpful for getting to people and to understand the complex features of Ellie. So I'm gonna go work on that Help Center article right now.
Okay, so I've gotten through a lot of this list, all the stuff we have to do to launch this feature. There's not much of a time rush here. We still gotta wait for Apple to approve the iOS update anyway, which they'll probably get to tomorrow. And then I wanna time everything where once that's out there, I make all the announcements, send out all the emails, and and, uh, and actually like publicize the launch. Pretty happy with the progress here, so gonna take a break right now and, and go get dinner. Just got back from dinner, gonna continue working on this stuff. Currently like 10 p.m. on a Saturday, and yeah, this is what I am choosing to do with my weekend. Gonna try to actually um, finish writing up everything I need to for this launch so that hopefully, again, by tomorrow, we'll be able to just press the button and then everything, you know, everything goes out, everything goes live. Finally finished writing up the change log. Uh, this actually took a lot of time to write. Uh, just because there was so much stuff. There's gonna be a little bubble that pops up here whenever a new changelog item is added. It's actually been a while since I updated this. So last update was, I don't even know. I think it was a few months ago. But since the last update, a ton of stuff has been released. And here I, I drafted up writing about the Outlook integration, talked about the iOS widgets that were released. Uh, I actually decided to link to, to the relevant YouTube videos where users can see like behind the scenes of building these features. And then talked about the Slack integration that I released. And then I talked about some other small improvements that were made. Like I added this quick capture feature, Zapier integration, task priority. The only reason that this thing is so long this time is because it's been like two or three months since I've updated this thing, but I'm gonna try to update this at least once a month moving forward. So I'm gonna wait until Apple approves my build and then the Outlook integration is fully released before publishing this. I can finally check that off here. I think I'm actually just gonna wait till tomorrow to finish the rest of this. There's kind of no point until Apple approves the beta anyway. Yeah, gonna call it a night right now. We're gonna go pick this up tomorrow. Okay, so this morning Apple actually approved the iOS version. So now anyone can use the Outlook integration if they have the iOS app. So now I'm gonna go ahead and deploy that so anyone can use this on the desktop version too. So now all of that's building and in a few minutes, everyone should have access to the Outlook integration. I already pushed the website changes live. So if you go on the website, it mentions Outlook, the help center mentions Outlook. All that's left is sending out emails to people. I gotta send out an email to all the beta testers letting them know it's finally live. Gotta send a notification to everyone who upvoted this on the feedback board. The last thing we gotta do is actually send out a general email to everyone who signed up in the last few months for LE, letting them know, hey, you can now use your Outlook calendar with LE. This is important to notify the existing users, especially the ones who've been waiting for something like this. Hey, it's launched. And the second thing, which I'm actually really curious to see what the results are, a lot of people sign up for Ellie, look for the Outlook integration. When they realize that it's not there, they just leave. This is gonna be my attempt to reach back out to those users, let them know, hey, why don't you give it another chance? We finally have the integration and hopefully we can rewin those users back over. Those are the two things that this email is gonna do. This is actually my first big email blast that I'm doing to announce a feature. We'll see how many people unsubscribe, we'll see how many people click, we'll see if it actually does anything, but I actually have high hopes for this type of email. I think that'll actually make a pretty big difference. And then in terms of social media, tweet this stuff out. I'll probably make a couple TikToks talking about the Outlook integration and promoting it a little bit. And also this video is a type of promotion for this feature. So these are the things that go in when launching a feature like this. If you guys like this kind of content, check out my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post every other day showing behind the scenes of me building the productivity app. And obviously subscribe if you found this video interesting. But yeah, hope you guys found this interesting. And thanks so much for watching.